You know, there, there's another war that's been going on for a good many years, but especially since the early 70s. We have spent hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars on this particular war, but it's been war on American citizens more than it's been a war to change these conditions. And that is the war on drugs, which has been a complete, total failure. <laughs> Ron Paul says so, and I agree. The war has led, the war on drugs has led us to a condition where the states pass laws that say that if you happen to be ill, you are sick, you're getting chemotherapy, you have AIDS, and you get benefit by smoking marijuana, and the law permits you to do it, which should be permissible in a republic, no, the federal government actually arrests sick people in the name of compassionate conservatism and putting people in prison. But some say, well, it's dangerous. You might do other things and, and it's a danger to you and what you do with your own body. Yeah, you know, I made a comment once in a speech on the House floor, I said, yes, some of the strongest drug warriors in Washington, D.C., rant and rave about the possibility of a sick person using marijuana for their illness at the same time. But guess what? They have no hesitation to imbibe in that drug called alcohol, a more dangerous drug. Yeah. All those that oppose are alcoholics. We all know that. But the drug war has caused us to do so many foolish things. Not only it's Even a violation of freedom of choice and taking your own risks, it violates the concept of states' rights and state legislation, but it also has done something rather rather weird in many ways. This whole idea, and it's only recent, it's in the lifetime of many of us here. It was the first federal law against the use of marijuana that occurred in 1937, I believe. 1937, before that, people did use that. States had right, right to regulate, but it's, it's, a recent, it's a recent onset. But and during the war, it was important that a related plant uh, to marijuana called hemp was, uh, was used. They were encouraged to grow it. It was useful in the war effort. You can make clothes and medical problems and food, pro, uh, f food products out of, out of hemp. But we are obsessed and confused and what does the federal government do? If you go out and plant hemp plants, you're going to go to jail. What's going on? And they'll tell you, oh no, it's a drug. Somebody might smoke it. But you know what? To get high on a hemp cigarette, the cigarette has to be big as a telephone pole. This is, this is a very, very serious issue. And the last thing I ever want to leave anybody with is that I think drugs are, are safe. I think drugs are very dangerous. I think illegal drugs, the ones that are currently illegal, are very, very dangerous and we should be very cautious about it. But I also, as a physician, recognize of the great danger of prescription drugs. That's bad shit. I don't take a prescription drug. No way, boy. What about the government mandating mental health testing for all our school kids? And when they run these pilot programs, they find that 10% of our students really need help with these uh, psychotropic drugs. That's the kind of drug regulation that we need. We need to stop that. Get drugs out of their school. Prescription drugs out of their school. Get sugar out of their school. But this this whole school. this whole issue of, of hemp is is rather fascinating. Not only in the idea of personal choices and uh, states' rights, but also the stupid complications that come from it. So what what do we do? We we talk about our energy problems, and we do because the government's too much involved. They subsidize one form of energy and they prohibit the other form of energy. They put roadblocks in front of nuclear energy and then they go and subsidize raising corn to make ethanol, which doesn't make any economic sense. 
Now, the Brazilians, the Brazilians know how to make ethanol uh, from sugarcane, and they can actually sell us ethanol made in Brazil cheaper than we can make it from corn in this country. But what happened? We put a tariff on it to punish you, so you have to pay more for it. I love how everybody knows whether the boo or cheer. the end of Ron Paul's speech about him. Wouldn't it be wonderful if hemp could save the planet and the few indica and sativa sesame or sesame milia, however you want to pronounce it, um, get on the, on the side. I always picture um, uh, Molokai, for instance, of having hemp on the east and uh, cannabis on the west and a casino in the middle. Everybody would be on Molokai. Everybody would be on Molokai. You got hemp to work with and the THC to smoke and a casino to try your luck. What more do you want? It could all be there. And the Native Hawaiians could be rich. But in a perfect world, we ain't got a perfect world. So there you are. Love yourself first. Then, go, then love those that take care of you. And take care of those that love you. And we'll see you next time.